Welcome to episode 397 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I am interviewing screenwriter and fellow podcaster Jeffrey D. Calhoun. He runs the successful screenwriter podcast, which you can find anywhere podcasts are available. And he's also a screenwriter, and we talk very specifically about how he's been able to get gigs and get projects produced. For him, it's been a lot of networking. He has a very unique way of doing his networking, and he goes into some real deep detail about it. So stay tuned for that interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found in my on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast and then just look for episode number 397. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I teach you how to write a professional log on and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. Just a quick few words about what I'm working on. So on the Rideshare Killer, we are still meeting with distributors that our sales agent is bringing to us. So hopefully we will settle on one soon. I've actually started writing another spec as I'm trying to get some other projects going. Um, I have a short film. I've got an actor friend um, that would like to do a short film. So I'll probably try and do that um, sometime here in the next few months. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just um, working on this spec. It's actually been quite a bit of fun writing this spec. I really haven't done a spec like this in quite a while. There's a lot of free them um in it you know you're really at least in the beginning you're really only writing it for yourself and there is something to that it's a sci-fi epic so it's a bit outside the scope of what i've been producing myself but um i'd like to just have this one in sort of my quill my quiver of scripts um if i ever get the opportunity to direct something much larger this would be like a cool project to have quick update on the contest we'll be making our second round announcement on september 27th so obviously that's been a big part of what i've been doing lately starting to read some scripts and um, really look through them spending a lot of time getting them out to the industry judges um, again that's September 27th we'll make our second round announcement so if you enter the contest definitely keep an eye out for that we'll send out um, an email to everyone but we'll also be posting it on the website as you might remember last year's winner was a writer named Richard Pierce, who I interviewed on podcast episode 378. His film actually was produced and it actually premiered on Lifetime a couple of weekends ago. I record these podcasts a few weeks in advance and I actually didn't get word out, so I couldn't get the announcement out in the podcast. Um, but it was renamed when it originally was entered into the contest by Richard. It was actually called Friend Request. At some point, um, once it got... <clears throat> sold it was renamed to killer profile but now that it's actually showing on lifetime um, the lifetime network they've renamed it to do you trust your boyfriend so keep an eye out for that film do you trust your boyfriend on lifetime um, i'm sure they'll be running it again i think they usually they have a whole you know template where they they take these films and they they run them a bunch of times so i'm um, definitely keep an eye out for that and i'm sure it'll eventually um, as well end up on on the various demand um, video on demand platform so hopefully i can make an announcement there but you know this is a good a good example of you know a low budget script that kind of went through some development process obviously the contest and um, definitely listen to the episode with Richard um, again that's episode 378 um, he was really clear in in exactly what he was trying to write he was writing a lifetime movie he knew that from from the jump um, and I think that was a big part of his success and he really goes into some great deal detail on uh, in that on the podcast episode but again the movie's called do you trust your boyfriend and um, I highly recommend you watch the movie and then also um, check out the podcast episode that Richard did with me. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I'm interviewing screenwriter Jeffrey D. Calhoun. Here is the interview. Welcome, Jeffrey, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Well, thanks for having me on, Ashley. This is awesome. So to start out, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? 
I grew up in the Detroit area. Uh, I mean, I've always loved films and television. I actually stumbled into screenwriting on a bet. A friend of mine was an editor for a local kids show and like a Saturday morning show, and he wanted to get into screenwriting. So he put an open call out to everybody. Nobody responded. So I was like, I'll do it. So then uh, we, I learned how to write a screenplay, ended up falling in love with it. And, uh, and you know, here we are 15 years later. Did you have any before that? Were there any like sort of thoughts of I could be a writer or screenwriter? Did you have any aspirations before that? It never even weighed on me. I mean, I'm actually dyslexic, so I I own that. Um, So being a writer never really occurred to me. After I started screenwriting for about four or five years, I just really loved it. And but I never thought this is something you could get paid to do. Uh, And then one day it just stumbled on me. This nice old woman asked me. I enjoyed what I what I did for a living at the time. And I and I realized, oh, no. And she said, you got to do what you love. And I was like, well, I like writing. <laughs> so so I ended up uh, really pursuing that. Huh. And and all the Star Wars paraphernalia I see behind you. And I mentioned this on, on your podcast. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I mean, clearly you were into that sort of stuff, films yeah. and movies. Oh, yeah. It was a love. I loved I mean, you know, I'm a Generation Xer, I, I latchkey kid, right? So I grew up in front of the TV. So, I mean, I love all the, you know, I watched films all day long and, and it was always my escape. And um, till to, to this day, you know, pre-COVID, I would go to the theater by myself even and just hang out in the theater and watch films because... I just love that environment and taking mm-hmm. in story because story is tradition. And I feel like it makes us better people as well. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right. I, I used to go to movies alone as well. And, and there is some sort of calming, calming effect, especially in the day when nobody else is there. You mentioned that you were slight uh, or dyslexic. I also am slightly dyslexic. I'm curious. Well, I'm curious. Um, how would you think that's affected your writing and, and how have you overcome it? It's a superpower, dude. Hmm. Like being dyslexic. So dyslexics think visually. So it's just the way that our brains are. So we think in pictures. So since you think in pictures, when it comes to screenwriting, it's a visual medium in a written form. So you can see the scene already. You just have to translate it, which is a lot more difficult for people who aren't dyslexic because they have to learn how to think visually, but we already do. Mm, Interesting. Um, And so when, when did this, when did you get diagnosed and and how did you work through this? It sounds like you know a lot more about it than me. When I was a little kid, I was, um, I was in the special reading class. So it was me. It was the girl who had just um, come in from China. Um, and then there, w- there was somebody who was who was suffering with. Um, I mean, they, they didn't diagnose it, but I'd have to assume it was some kind of a significant autism. And so it was just us three in the class. And I couldn't alphabetize to save my life. So what I used to do during um, <laughs> during break and lunches is I would pack extra hostess cupcakes in my lunch bag. And then I would just bribe one of the other kids to like help me off the ties or help me check my reports and things like that. Cause they were spelled so poorly. Huh? That's funny. I had terrible handwriting. I still have terrible handwriting oh, yeah. and I'm a terrible speller, um, which I always attributed to the dyslexia. Still, even as an adult, I'm a terrible speller. You can find my selling your screenplay. You can find lots of spelling pro- typos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I get people emailing me all the time. The other <laughs> big thing I've found is um, I'm a very, very slow reading reader. And that's been probably, I'd say the biggest thing that's hampered me as yeah. a screenwriter. How have you dealt with that? Are you a slow reader? And have you been able to overcome that? Well, I run Refix Your Script out so we do a lot of film like script analysis and stuff like that so what i end up doing is i bring in affiliates who work with me staff wise and then i i make sure that they're fully vetted and then they help kind of all the overflow but yeah i am i am a slow reader it can take me a long time to read a script um but when i read that script i'll tell you i know everything about it Let's dive, in, dive into some of your projects. Um, I just looked at your IMDb page, um, and let's start with some of these credits. On SOS and Silent Sirens of Chrome, you have a contributing writer credit. I'm curious, what exactly does that mean? What did you, what, what part did you take in the writing of this? So SOS has brought on to fix that gig before it went into shooting. So I had, um, they had run into several screenplay issues because uh, they just had a bunch of writers on it. So I came in, right before shooting and I, and I did a huge rewrite on it. So I came in and fixed that for them and they were happy with it. And they went into shooting with a, with a consistent uh, storyline. Um, Sirens of Chromes, I've been 
on that project on and off, just helping the director really delineate story for it. So um, he'll kind of trying to tell a true life story and, it, and, it, and he just needs help focusing. So I come in and I help him rework aspects of story and subplots for that. Gotcha. Gotcha. And how did you find these gigs? Um, what, what is your method for, for finding gigs like this? It's always networking, man. You know, that's, that's the secret weapon. So uh, people end up finding me really. Um, so, uh, people, people will know people that I know and they say, I have a hard time. The script is in trouble. We're shooting next Wednesday. And then they go, Oh, well, Jeff fixed the scripts. And so then I, I end up coming into the project. That's usually what happens. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I wonder if you could do like, take us through one of these specifically, um, who hired you and exactly how did that sort of line go? I get brought in by the by the directors. First, we'll have a meeting and we'll talk about like if I can bring value to the project. Because I don't want to come onto a project that I can't help, especially if they're in a pinch. So we'll talk about what the concept is, what the issues are. Um, then they'll send me the script and I'll look the script over and I'll be like, okay, what can I do to for, for this? But the other thing is, is like, I love a challenge. So it's, if a script is like in a lot of trouble, I get really fired up about it. I'm like, yeah, I can work on this. And so then I'll, I'll work on that script and really try and, and fix it. And I'll tell them, this is what I think I can do. And, uh, but I need freedom to be able to do it. So they'll, they'll be like, yeah, yeah, go for it. And, or they'll, or they'll give me parameters if they're stuck on locations and things like that. And I'll take all of those into effect. And it's just a lot of fun for me. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it sounds like on Sirens of Chrome, this was a director. Was this a director that you had worked with previously? Um, no, I know. It was the first time. A uh, really great guy. And okay. uh, we got along. He, he took me to dinner and he said, and hey, who, you know. who sent who hooked you guys up? Um, he actually found me at a, at a film mixer. OK. Yeah. Just someone you're networking and just chatting. Yeah. With people. Yeah. I go there. I, I, I go to the film mixers and sometimes I have my little booth. I'll do like book signings at the booth oh. or, I'll, or I'll rep the company. And um, he saw me. We sat down, started chatting and pulled up a chair. And he's a good guy. OK. So tell me about this. What are these film mixers? Um, where, did you, where did you find that? Well, you can go any. So um, I'll do them at film festivals. You know, you'll have like networking events. I'll be there or we have and you'll them. pay for a booth and actually set up a booth and try and yeah. sign autographs and sell your book is the idea. Yeah, I'll do I that as you. well. Yeah. Or locally at the Royal Star Film Festival in Detroit, we have uh, monthly film mixers where you can go and and mix with producers, directors, hmm. actors, all kinds of talent. And, and then I'll be there with my little booth hanging out, chatting with people. Okay, that's perfect. And that's actually a um, something I've never heard someone getting gigs that way. So there's a little bit of new new information for the listeners. Um, I noticed on IMDb too, you, you've done a bunch of documentaries. And how, how do you think those prepared you to, um, to be a writer of fiction, you know, screenplay writing fiction? Documentaries are really interesting because it's a whole different way of looking at writing a writing a script because you don't just have to do the visual, you also have to do the audio and the narrative. So you actually split a documentary screenplay into three different columns as you're writing it. So it's like a whole new way of looking at it. And then you have all of the source material you have to work with as well to help weave the narrative. So it's just it's kind of like this wonderful puzzle game. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as working in fiction, I think for me, it's all about that story. So even if it's fiction or nonfiction with the documentary, you are still working in, you know, what is the story I'm trying to tell? What is the, what is the character that I'm trying to help uh, express throughout this entire story? Is there a theme that I'm weaving into it? So all of the elements are there. It's just how you, how you kind of bake the cake, I guess. Gotcha. And on something like a documentary, um, how is it actually written? Do they hire the writer before they've shot a frame of film? Do they go and shoot a bunch of footage and bring in the writer to start, you know, work with the footage and, and wrangle it into a coherent story? I've seen both. So um, I've seen I've, I've, I've seen projects where I've come on and um, they just have an idea. And then we start kind of sussing out the idea, do a bunch of the research, and then they go and do the recording. Or I have ones where they've done all the recording already, but they're still having trouble finding the narrative. So then I'll come in and I'll tweak the script and redo dialogue or redo narration to help create that that uh, that narrative so they can keep the audience engaged throughout the story. Gotcha, gotcha. And what are you actually doing? Like, it seems to me if they already have footage, do you have basically like a script? And so then you change the script and then the editor looks at the script and implements those changes? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll go through and I will I will uh, change narrative. Um, I'll change dialogue. They can re-record dialogue. That's happened. And they, they can go through and they can re-edit it sections out. They can 
go through and even if they have all the footage already be like well you need extra footage for this because you're not you know explaining exactly what you're trying to say to the audience so they'll go get new footage so there's, it, it can definitely piecemeal it together Gotcha. Gotcha. And, um, you have two of these credits, um, crop circle realities, occult journeys. Um, how did you get those gigs again? Let's just run yeah. through it. Like with, with crop circle realities, how, how did that one, how did you get hired on that one? Oh, that's Darcy. Darcy's awesome. So, um, I'm, I'm at Darcy. We're on the film festival circuit actually. So okay. we ended up having pizza together. <laughs> okay. And who, who is Darcy? She's a producer. No, he, he's a, he's a, he's a director oh, okay. and a, and a writer as well. And he, and he likes to, to uh, do um, documentaries and all kinds of fun, like paranormal things, supernatural things. Those are topics that really interest him. So that's what he likes to dive into. And that's his niche. I um, mean, we were just chatting and, uh, and uh, he was like, Hey, you know, I need help with this, with this one doc. And I was like, absolutely. And I just kind of rolled into it. And it was mm -hmm. just a ton of fun. Gotcha. Gotcha. And it looks like early in your career, you started with a couple of shorts. Um, how did you get those shorts produced? And ultimately, how did those those help you along your journey as a screenwriter? Oh, the first short I did was for a martial arts uh, a martial arts school that I, I had trained at and they wanted to do a promo. So we we, we put together this this kind of like 10 minute short film mm -hmm. that was doubled as a promo for for them. And then they ended up playing it on a loop in the lobby. And that was a lot of fun because, you know, we went on locations, we did shooting and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, um, you, on your, your most recent credit is a film called finding Nicole. Um, what's yeah. that project all about? Well, that's an amazing, that's an amazing project. That's a true, true story that I was honored to be able to adapt about a woman who um, left her ex-husband after he tried killing her and the kids. Um, and, and then he hired an assassin after he was put in, in prison uh, to come after her. So I was, uh, it was on the local news. It actually hit national news. Um, uh, I think she was on CNN about it. Um, so that ended up getting um, picked up by a, by a, by a director. The director knew of me, approached me with it. I said, what do you think? I, I, I absolutely want to write this story. Um, and I was lucky enough to adapt it. And now uh, they're in pre-pro. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you mentioned that this director is the one that hired you. Um, how did you meet that director? Again, uh, just Harley, Harley Wallen and uh, networking, man. I mean, he, he knew of me at a film festival. He had saw me um, on a panel. I did a panel at a film festival on screenwriting. Uh, it was the Indie Gathering International Film Festival. He saw me there. He ended up stopping by at one of my booths when I was doing a book signing. And, uh, and we just chatted it up and really enjoyed it. And, and I just love meeting and networking with people. And uh, that's that's how I get my gigs. It's pretty amazing. I'm very, mm -hmm. I'm very uh, thankful. Gotcha. Gotcha. And um, let's talk about your book a little bit. Um, the guide for every screenwriter from synopsis to subplots, the secrets of screenwriting revealed. Um, yeah. how, so how does your approach differ? I mean, there's obviously a million screenwriting books out there. How does your approach differ from some of the other books? I'm kind of a fan of Blake Snyder and Sid Field. Um, how does your approach differ maybe from those folks? All of those, I have a lot of respect for Sid Field, Blake Snyder, all the guys, you know, Vicky King, all those guys, but they all really come, they're all descendants of Joseph Campbell's monomyth. If you really look at it, if you do the history, he created the monomyth, which is the hero's journey, right? Which is derived from all of different cultures and the different um, icons and heroes or religious symbols within those cultures all have followed the same journey. He broke that down. And so then that was kind of um, uh, created from Christopher Volk took the took the monomyth and then kind of watered it down a little bit into the writer's journey. And then from there, everybody kind of piecemealed their own little structure together. So you've got the, you know, Blake Snyder, you've got Sid Field and you have other versions of it. And so what that has done is, is people kind of almost keep watering it down so that the steps get fewer and fewer. Whereas before you had, you know, so many, and then you had like 12, then you have like, you know, I have like nine. Um, so I've taken that structure and kind of created an amalgamation of all of these different little um, uh, journeys of the characters and then, and make it simple to understand. And then I mix in subplots with it as well. And that's kind of what separates my book from everything else is that I include the subplots of where they fall in line with the main plot. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, is there any secrets you can reveal here on the podcast? Are there some things that, um, you know, think screenwriters need to know maybe a little tidbit from the book? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the big things I always find is a lot of scripts will always be super concept heavy, but they won't really incorporate a theme. And when they don't have that theme, they don't really have a through line for the story of where to go with it. So the, if you look at it like this, like the concept is the engine, but the theme is the fuel. So the theme kind of helps guide you where to go within the story. Otherwise, it just kind of turns from set piece into set piece. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that is something to really play around with. But the other thing about theme is that your central character's journey is basically a relationship to the theme, whereas the central character becomes like the living embodiment of the theme. So you put them on an arc of that theme that causes them to change as a person, not necessarily grow, change. That's what's different. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm curious. Um, and I keep going back to this networking, um, that you've okay. been doing. I'm sure. curious, did you, when you were writing this book, um, was that part of your plan? Was there a plan? Had you been to festivals and recognized that there was some kind of a market there? Um, cause I, I, I mean, I've written a book, obviously I've got my site. So, so you saw this and you saw that, had you been going to festivals before you wrote the book and sort of saw that you could get a booth and sell the book there? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, querying was huge. And everybody said for a long time, querying was the answer to success. I never agreed with it. And I even had success with querying and I still didn't think it was, it was the end all be all. Cause I always look at querying, like pulling the lever on a slot machine. Like you just don't know what you're going to get, but you keep hoping that you're going to hit that jackpot. And I, and I thought, you know, the best way to do this, really put yourself out there, make people know who you are, network with them and then eventually build that relationship and that's going to lead to work and that's that's really succeeded with me um so yeah i put i put that in the book gotcha gotcha and it you show up at these festivals and it makes you an authority as well having a booth having a published book that sort of stuff plays into them potentially hiring you correct i guess you know i've never really looked at it that way i've just always looked at it that i know what i can bring to the table and so if I get brought on to, uh, to a, a gig that I know I can really provide some value to them and really help with that, that kind of a script. So I think you have to make sure that you're at the level to be able to do that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so what do you tell us a little bit about your podcast? Um, what do you have going, going on over there? Yeah. So the successful screenwriter podcast is, uh, it's, a uh, hit, the. Uh, top 15 podcasts. It's um, I interview screenwriting gurus, instructors, Hollywood writers. I've had yourself is going to be on there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we really break down what helped them find success and what kind of, and I kind of mind them for knowledge that I can pass on to my viewers. And it's been, it's been popular. You got to gotcha. And how do people find that? Yeah, you can go. Uh, it's the the successful screenwriter podcast is on every major podcast or platform, but you can go to the successful screenwriter dot com as well and visit the website. So, Got a perfect. ton of cool stuff. Yeah. Got to, got you. Perfect. We'll round that up for the show notes. Um, I always like to just um, wrap up the interview by asking the guest if there's anything they've seen recently, um, anything on Netflix, Hulu, HBO um, that you thought maybe screenwriters could could really learn from. I actually watched a really cool Norwegian film. I think it was on Netflix or Amazon Prime um, called Mortal. And I thought it was really great. It was like huh. the Norwegian version of Brightburn. I thought it was awesome. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I have not heard of that one. So that's a, that's an interesting yeah. recommendation. Um, and how can people find your book? Um, that's available on Amazon, wherever books can be found. Oh yeah. I mean, you can find it anywhere. I think it's even sold online at Target. So he's <laughs> yeah, right. the guy for every screenwriters. It's pretty easy to find. Gotcha. Gotcha. What's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing? Twitter, Facebook, obviously we'll, we'll keep your website in the show notes as well, but are you active yeah. on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook? I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Twitter as at, uh, at screenwriter pod. I'm on Twitter as well. I'm on uh, Instagram as uh, at the successful screenwriter. Okay, perfect. We will round those up for the show notes as well. You ended my podcast by the great question. Was there anything that um, I, I should have asked you that I didn't? Is there anything you wanted to say that maybe um, we just didn't get a chance to talk to talk about? No, I think we covered it pretty good. Um, I really appreciate you having me on the show. Jeffrey, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. 
SYS's From Concept to Completion Screenwriting Course is now available. Just go to www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash screenwriting course. It will take you through every part of writing a screenplay, coming up with a concept, outlining, writing the opening pages, the first act, second act, third act, and then rewriting. And then there's even a module at the end on marketing your screenplay once it's polished and ready to be sent out. We're offering this course in two different versions. The first version, you get the course, plus you get three analyses from an SYS reader. You'll get one analysis on your outline, and then you'll get two analyses on your first draft of your screenplay. This is just our introductory price. You're getting three full analyses, which is actually the same price as our three pack analysis bundle. So you're essentially getting the course for free when you buy the three analyses that come with it. And to be clear, you're getting our full analysis with this package. The other version doesn't have the analysis. So you'll have to find some friends or colleagues who will do the feedback portion of the course with you. I'm letting SYS select members do this version of the course for free. So if you're a member of SYS Select, you already have access to it. You also might consider that as an option. If you join SYS Select, you will get the course as part of that membership too. A big piece of this course is accountability. Once you start the course, you'll get an email every Sunday with that week's assignment. And if you don't complete it, we'll follow up with another reminder the next week. It's easy to pause the course if you need to take some time off, but as long as you're enrolled, you'll continue to get reminders for each section until it's completed. The objective of the course is to get you through it in six months so that you have a completed, polished screenplay ready to be sent out. So if you have an idea for a screenplay and you're having a hard time getting it done, this course might be exactly what you need. If this sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, just go to www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash screenwriting course. It's all one word, all lowercase. I will, of course, link to the course in the show notes, and I will put a link to the course on the homepage up in the right-hand sidebar. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing Brandon Steer, who is a writer and director who just did a really fun film called The Velasa Pastor about a pastor who kills dinosaurs. Um, looks like a really cool, fun film. So definitely check that out if you have a chance before the interview next week. Brendan talks to us, talks to us about his career, how he got into the business, worked his way up. And then um, we talk specifically about The Velasa Pastor, which actually started out as a short film. Um, we talked through the through that a bit as well, using a short film to eventually get your feature film produced. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. That's the show. Thank you for listening.